I think the other side of AI is one of my favorite topics. It's humanoid robots. I was building robots when I was in junior high school, but they didn't do what the robots today do. So um, uh, I'm going to share a short video here. Uh, this is a robot uh, called Clone. Uh, I contacted the CEO, and he's going to be bringing his robots to the Abundance Summit next year. But let's check out a little bit of a video here. So uh, what Clone is doing is basically uh, creating, uh, what's that, Westworld? Uh, so these are, these are muscles, um, they're hydraulic systems, and that video is underrepresenting what it can do in terms of moving the hands. Uh, they hope to have it walking in the next few months. Uh, they're based in Eastern Europe where they're doing a lot of the work. Uh, but talk about an interesting future of robots where, I mean, a lot of the robots today out of the U.S. and China are clunky work walkers. They, they do walk, but they don't have that, that human emotional fluidic mo movement, but uh, these, these might. It's interesting that they chose to work um, like in that way, you know, in a sense like brushless motors are, have kind of helped us do an amazing amount of like cheaper prices uh, and, and incredible capabilities in robotics. That's my first thought. The second one is, I think the, the black horse here, similar to, uh, to DeepSeek is Unitree. Unitree has some insane videos. They look like CGI where you have four-legged robots that also have wheels, which I think is a clever idea. So they can sort of super fast, but also jump and climb up stuff and spin the wheels at the same time. Um, that's the second thought. And the third one is, yeah, I'm excited. And uh, now the question is always like, what's the, what's the really most amazing use case for humanoid robots versus, you know, like a tractor factory where you just have a bunch of little lasers and thousands of arms and things like that. You wouldn't want a bunch of humanoid robots walk over a field, similar to the dishwasher stuff we talked about earlier. At the same time, it's not a zero sum game. There's a ton of cool stuff. I would totally buy a humanoid robot to have like stuff be done in my house and just kind of clean and they can do it at night, right? So they don't have to be super fast. And uh, now the fourth comment is, I feel like everyone works on the AI version of robotics, like the original Terminator. No one works on a T-1000. And one of my many ideas is actually to build uh, a T-1000-like robot. And I have a bunch of ideas I recently like jammed on uh, with a really brilliant hardware hacker. And he's like, you know, this could actually work and make sense. So Project number five, um, if I have some uh, Uh-oh, right, well, you heard it here, folks. <laughs> Jim Cameron was right, and it's all going to be due to Richard Scherzer. Um, I, I got I to say something here. Um, yes. You know, if you want a musculoskeleton humanoid robot, you get a man and a woman, and you have a baby, and you grow the baby. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't, I, I, I really struggle with this. Like if, you know, we talked earlier, right? If you want a dishwasher, you have a machine that that sprays water in a particular way and it looks like a box and you have trays to put dishes in whatever oh, same with the vacuum cleaner why and to the point that richard just made it's much, so much more powerful to have wheels on the legs etc cetera, etc cetera. why are we constantly going we, back to the human form we've had this argument frankly, we, we have we how so many times you're I, just it wrong. drives me nuts you're just wrong Richard, the argument we've had is, I kind of say, if you're going to build a robot, have one with seven arms that can do much, many more things. Like, uh, why make it look like a human? Anyway, because it's cool. <laughs> so I, so I am an investor in Makina Labs too. They built these massive arms and they can form sheet metal. And they work with SpaceX and a bunch of folks. Whenever you don't want to build an entire factory to make that same large piece of metal millions of times, but you need it like 200 times, they're perfect for it. They can literally <laughs> ship a factory that creates any spare part into the field somewhere. And then you just have like, uh, almost like a blacksmith, but massive uh, and, and AI. And they're also like, oh, anti-humanoid. Now, again, it's not a zero sum game, right? I think some people want like a beautiful humanoid like robot in their house, but we can still have dishwashers and factory robots and so on that are very custom purpose and look crazy, funky with 20 arms. And, and you know, that that's the excitement for robotics it doesn't have to be zero sum. All right. We have a lot of a, a lot of robot announcements uh, this week. So let me let me continue on here. Next up is Neo's Gamma. So, you know, listen, I think this looks pretty damn cool. I mean, this is, uh, uh, you know, in terms of its motions, now, how staged this is and uh, how practiced, you know, we don't see the 37,000 shots that went wrong, but uh, that. 
looks like a pretty friendly home robot. You know, one of the questions I ask everybody is, how many will you own? You know, I, when I interviewed Elon and Brett Adcock, Brett's the CEO, we'll see him in a minute, CEO of a uh, figure. And of course, Elon oversees Tesla and, and Tesla bot now called Optimus. The projection is as many as 10 billion robots by 2040. And I can imagine that. I have no problems imagining I would own, uh, you know, two or three, maybe 10. You, you know my struggle with this. I mean, one robot moving very quickly is the, is the same as seven of them. And again, why does it have to look like a human being? I'm, it would be much better with wheels and seven arms. Uh, you can have the, you can have those. At the, so so i struggle i think i think we i think i feel more comfortable having you know a humanoid robot walking around the house than some strange looking contraption i think we're going to end up with the problem in the same way with virtual reality with the uncanny valley where it's very disconcerting i think we're going to have the same thing with humanoid robots for sure and like the sci-fi kind of uh is is underrated and showing us sometimes also the like the positive ways like um, you know, people will fall in love with their robots and they'll have these androids. Now, I think short term, uh, we're going to have to, we're going to see a lot of folks just uh, remote controlling a robot, collecting training data that way. And mm -hmm. so there's going to be an un part of the uncanny valley is you may have someone in uh, India or somewhere sitting, looking into your entire home, being able to navigate everything, seeing yes. your kids, opening your doors and everything. Uh, and you kind of have to be okay with that invasion of privacy potentially, right? Um, and then once you once they get good enough, then you're right. Like they could be faster. I mean, they could put on like wheels and like you know shoes with wheels on, and then you know <laughs> attach another arm if you really want them to. Uh, you know, they can be more modular that way. So uh, I'm I'm excited for it. All right. So that was Neo Gamma from One X Tech. Uh, let's go to the next uh, robot here. And, uh, and this is figure AI. So just for, uh, for disclosure, I'm an investor in, in figure. I don't know if you are, Richard. Um, this is Brett Adcock's company, and they just announced their software. Interestingly enough, uh, figure used to have a software relationship or a gen AI relationship with open AI. Uh, and they have, uh, they shut that down and they decided to build their own AI team internally and to build uh, Helix. And I think the logic there is in the same way that Tesla got so much data uh, from autopilot as we were driving it around that allowed them to create these incredible models uh, that figures AI, I really hope they come up with a separate name for it because calling the company figure and the robot figure, it gets a little bit confusing. but they're going to get a lot of data uh, and that's going to train the AI in the physical universe. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, at their, at their video. So, Salim, instead of having four arms, you have two robots instead, and they collaborate. It's called collaboration. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I think this is going to take a much longer time for people for it to work out than than people realize. But you know, it's it's fantastic to see the speed at which it's moving forward. Because if ten years ago, when we were first looking at robots, it was really hard to imagine they would get to this uh, the level DARPA of Grand Challenge. Is correct. Yeah, remember the Grand uh, Challenge. It was so clunky and so uh, I think so. It's fantastic to see that, um, uh, but, but the use cases and the application areas is where I think it'll be. You know, my Roomba still cannot clean a room without me moving all the furniture around for it. So <laughs> hardware, hardware, hardware is hard. Yeah, yeah. And like I think robotics has done a phenomenal job if we can constrain the environment a little bit more. And that's why self driving is also a fairly constrained environment, really standardized in a lot of places. The highways all look the same things like that, road signs or standardizations. Houses have very little standardization. And you're right, it will be a very, very hard. And the companies that are actually able to get through and get like one use case so nailed that is big enough and important enough for folks will be in a huge advantage. But it is harder than most people think. It'll be very capital intensive. And then the question is, can you be a fast follower uh, out of China and just say, oh, this is how they do it now. We reverse engineer it. And then you can leapfrog, skip all the expensive uh, research stage. And, and that's right. And, and, and I'll go to my favorite use case, which is going to be a while before you get one of these humanoid robots and say, go change the baby's diaper. 
Like there's just so many <laughs> things that can go wrong with that. Yes, I still love the, the walk into the room and the the robot is holding the the baby by one foot. <laughs> <laughs> The funniest comment I saw on this figure video was, uh, this reminds me of uh, two of my buddies being really stoned and trying to <laughs> unload uh, the lot. The, yeah, that's, the that's perfect. Uh, South Park will have a field day with episodes around this. Uh, the the doorbell is about to ring. It's my, it's my figure robot coming over there to give you a hug. So answer it and be nice. Um, <laughs> okay.